The Invisible Man by H. G. Wells. Today we are on chapter number twenty, and as you can see, chapter number twenty is also going to be divided into part one and part two. And here we have uh, the part one of this chapter at the house in Great Portland Street. This chapter is a continuity of the previous chapter where. Uh, the invisible man is telling the history of his experimentation and how he came to this pass how he came to become the actual invisible man and the characters in this chapter are going to be the very two characters we've had before dr kemp and griffin uh, when we do this chapter i would like to mention that when we do chapter number 20 uh we have to take into account what had happened in chapter 19 and later on this goes up till chapter number 23 so from chapter number 19 till chapter number 23 we have the account of the experimentation that the invisible man had done in order to become invisible it would also give us a look into his character and his history what kind of a person was he what did he go through and things like that that you need to know just in order to know the character of a person and of course the detail of all the experimentation that he did and how he became successful so this starts from chapter number 19 and goes up to chapter number 23 this is like a background of the invisible man so in the last chapter he had told us the scientific details of his experiment and also he had told us how he had stolen from his father because of which he uh, his father had actually shot himself in chapter number 20 we move on from here he tells us that it is it was december of last year if you remember he had come to the town of iping in the month of january uh, it, we had um and uh, because that timeline is so important we we uh, we refer to it again and again how the story is moving forward and how this man had come uh, it was um, in fact it was early in february that he had come here so the month of january had passed and he is talking about december of last year which means about 2 months before we had first found the invisible man so this month of february we will have to remember and here we are talking about the month of uh, december of last year when this whole experimentation began uh in december he took up a room on rent at a house in great portland street so uh, this is where the name of the chapter comes from what, uh, what happens in, what experimentation takes place in that house so this is what he tells us so he took up a room on rent here and he set up his apparatus his ideas are all clear and he has set up his apparatus to conduct his experiment so 
uh, he has everything he needs he has a house he also has the money now so that he could actually take up this experiment which the idea of which is very very clear in his mind and he has thought about the process of invisibility all this time and he also says he also mentions that he went to his old place um he went uh, to the place where his family lived for the funeral of his father and uh, this ceremony that he ha had to attend he calls it a cheap funeral which is something he says for his own father and he also says that he did nothing he did nothing to clear the allegations of theft on his father of course because he was the one who stole the money but uh, he didn't say anything about it again it says a lot about his character he is detached he is detached from the memory of his old home you know his childhood his school days he the time that he has spent um he is completely completely detached from that memory because he doesn't want to think about it and he actually feels that this kind of detachment is pretty good he thinks it is of a big advantage to him because he does not want to be attached to anything uh, that is related to his past he just wants to think about the future that the experiment holds for him so right now this uh, these things say a lot about him uh, about the fact that how uh, heartless this man is you know how lack of emotions he displays when he goes for his father's funeral at the place and he calls it a very cheap funeral he feels happy when he comes back because he he thinks that his instruments and his apparatus you know his tools these are the one which belong to him they were actually waiting for him so he is happy to come back to his place he is completely completely obsessed with his experiment and he has nothing to do with the memory of his deceased father so he comes back he has come back to his lab and he uh, puts his complete effort his complete effort his energy and his time into the experiment that he is doing and he says that his experiment was theoretically a success but he had to test it so he tests it on a on a piece of white woolen cloth he says and it disappears so the first test is successful and secondly he tests it on a cat this cat belonged to a neighbor a lady in the neighborhood and she just came uh, maybe sit was sitting on a window or something and he tests it on her and the cat goes through a lot of pain uh, she mews painfully all night and uh, after going through a lot of pain she finally becomes invisible he says it is an extreme success but for the fact that her claws and her eyes 
the color of the eyes remain otherwise she becomes invisible in fact uh, she also scares him because at night the glowing eyes and nothing else were visible in the room and later the cat also escapes and he doesn't know you know what happened to the cat and kemp he, when he is listening to all this it is so unethical he has no right he has no right to torture an animal but kemp thinks nothing of it a cat is nothing to him uh, the cat might be in pain it might be suffering or whatever but uh, he has nothing related to that he is just happy that his experiment is at least partially successful now he just has to think of a way to get that color out of the way so he thinks about it and then uh, something else follows uh, he has an altercation an argument with his landlord because the lady complains against him a complaint by the lady who owned the cat so the lady explains that i could hear the mewing sound all night from his room so i don't know what he's doing and the landlord already is not happy with him he's an old man and he's not happy with this kind of a tenant he just wants him to get out but because uh, you know